Janet Larson, you say in your book that market forces are driving a great transition to clean energy. Why don't you explain what you mean? Historically, the move to renewables has been largely policy driven, but now with solar prices and wind prices falling incredibly fast, we're seeing that this transition is being driven by the market. Solar right now worldwide is growing by 60% a year and costs are, are falling. You can think back, we were at $70 a watt, now we're below 70 cents a watt. So it's, it's incredibly affordable. But I thought the big transition was into more fossil fuels because fracking is unlocking all this oil across America. We don't even know what to do with it anymore. <laughs> well, uh, I think that's slowing down as oil prices have fallen. And the thing about oil, um, people had been talking about peak oil, thinking about we wouldn't be able to produce enough. Now we're thinking about peak oil in terms of consumption peaking. Already in the United States, oil use has fallen in the last several years. We're beyond peak oil here. We're not gonna be using more because our cars are getting much more efficient. We're driving fewer miles. And I, I think this is part of the big shift. So when we look at the great transition, we see fracking as a diversion. Uh, the great transition to wind and solar energy is a transition to a lasting form of energy. But do you think now that oil is so cheap, it's gonna take the shine? away from renewable energy because it's just so cheap. You don't have to worry about solar panels, even though they've come down in price. Well, solar panel costs are falling, battery costs are falling. So when we think of the cars our kids are going to be driving, it's not going to be your conventional vehicle. It's going to be an electric vehicle. Plug in, you can plug it in at home, charge it, save yourself $2,000 or more per year in, in fuel savings, and you're going to be powering that with, with cheap renewable energy. And what about nuclear energy? This is theoretically clean. I know there's problems. There's a huge problem at Fukushima, and that's affected nuclear demand worldwide. But this is a clean energy. What's your view on nuclear? Nuclear gets taken out of the picture just on economics alone. Nuclear is incredibly expensive. Our newest nuclear plants in the, in the United States, I mean, they were, they're 20, 30 years old. Um, we only have a few under construction now. Those are all suffering cost delays. So it's just not economical. A nuclear facility takes years, maybe even decades to get up and running um, with, with all of the safety delays, whereas a wind farm or a solar facility can be up in a matter of months. So just not even thinking about the environment or the accidents, um, the economics for nuclear just don't work. So if an investor wanted to take advantage of the market forces driving this great transition, what should they be investing in? Should they be buying things like Tesla with those great batteries that are coming down the road and their cars that are currently on the road? Should they be shorting coal? What should they be doing? Batteries are exciting and an investment in wind and coal is an investment in a kind of energy that will last as long as the earth itself. Wind and solar, right? Not coal. Wind and solar. There you That's go. Right. All right. Thanks a lot, Janet, for coming thank on. You. And thank you for watching The Street.